hello guys welcome back to my channel please remember to like and hit the subscribe button now today we're going to be looking at a problem solving question and then you are going to guess what the topic is now here we have a beam balance and as you can see both sides have the same weight as both sides are equal now we're going to think of each small block as one kilograms all right so each of these small blocks is equal to one kilograms and this bag over here we don't know what that bag is equal to so your task is to find the mass of that bag now if this was a scale that was even being used back in the past then they would have to find some way to find a balance here so what am i going to do hmm. if i only want the mass of the bag then i only need to have the bag on that side so it means that each of these one kilograms and i have three kilograms over here i'm going to have to remove them and that is the only way I'm going to know what the mass of the bag is. So let's go right ahead. So from the left, I remove one of those mass. But this is what happens. It is no longer equal. Both sides are no longer balanced. So what I might have to do is to remove a one kilogram from the other side as well. And there we go. We are balanced again. So you see that as long as we remove the same mass from both sides, the balance will remain. Let us go and remove an X block again. So there again, the scale topples. So it means I'm going to have to remove a next block from over here. Let us remove the third and see what happens. Wow, you see what happens? The scale is once again unbalanced. So what I'm going to have to do is remove a next block there. Now, now that I only have the bag that I want on the left, and on the right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. I can tell because this scale is balanced that this bag of flour is equal to six kilograms, seeing that each block is equal to one kilogram. So the idea here is that if we remove the same mass from both sides, we can maintain the balance. But the question is, did I, did I have to remove them one by one? Let us go back and add back the blocks and see what happens. All right, let us say we went ahead and we removed all three blocks from the left-hand side because we want the mass of that bag. So let's go remove all three of them. So one, two, three. You can see that this thing is balanced. Now bear in mind that we had just removed three kilograms from the left. What about the right hand side? Now let us start removing and see what happens. So we remove one, it's still unbalanced. We remove two, it is still unbalanced. We remove three and there we go. We have a balance. So we could have actually removed three kilograms from both sides at the same time. Right? But we wouldn't have known what the mass of the bag is, so we had chosen to remove them one by one. We're going to add back the blocks and see if we can model this algebraically. So we add back the three blocks. Let me remove that there. And we add back the three blocks over here. Now, bear in mind that we started this system knowing that each block has a mass of one kilogram. However, we did not know what the mass of the bag is. Now, in math, when something is not known, it can be generally represented by a variable, or we call it an unknown. So what I could say is let the mass of the bag be x. So we're going to call mass of bag x. Why do I call it x? We call it x because we don't know what it is. It is an unknown. However, we know that x plus three kilograms that we have on the left there was actually equal to and we can count what is on the right so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine was equal to nine kilograms now some of us can go ahead and say all right if x plus three is equal to nine then of course the mass x must be six because we know that when we add six to three we get nine but how do we show this procedural because our intention of finding out what the mass of the bag is, we had to remove those three kilograms on the left here. So let us go ahead and do it again. So we have one, two, three. But once we do that, the scale is now unbalanced. So we actually have to remove those three from the other side to keep that balance. So let us see how we do that algebraically. So let us move back over to our equation. We have x plus three equal nine. Our job is to find x, so we only need to have x on the left hand side here, which means that that 3 needs to go. So what did we do? What we did was to subtract 
3 from that side. But then the right hand side would be unbalanced. So we had to remove 3 from that side as well. So we have x. We have x plus 3. To get x by itself, we have to subtract 3. But to keep it balanced or to keep it as an equation, we also have to remove 3 from the right hand side. So once we go now, we can say 3 minus 3 is 0, which leaves me with x on the left. And this is equal to 6 on the right hand side. So that is actually what we did. And as you can see here, one bag is equal to 6 blocks. So we know that the mass of the bag is actually 6 kilograms. Uh, here's the next scenario. On my scale on the left, we have two bags. We don't know what the mass of each bag is. Now on the right, we have, let us count this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 kilograms. Now, most persons can easily guess and say, boy, if one bag, well, if we have two bags equal to 12 kilograms, then of course one bag must be 6. But of course, in algebra, we have to show our procedures. So if we were to go ahead, bear in mind that we have 12 kilograms on the right and we have two bags on the left. If we were to go ahead and subtract and we take off one of the bags here. Hmm. So we take off one of the bags. The scale is unbalanced. So let us see how many blocks we'll actually have to remove in order to get the balance back. So let us go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. We have a balance. Bear in mind that we had 12 kilograms over there. And we have gone all the way down to six kilograms, which is half of 12. So in essence, what I did was to half both sides which is the same thing as saying we divided both sides by 2. Let us put on back the bag and now create an equation to model this. So we put on back the bag and we're going to add back our 6 blocks over here to get back the balance. And there we go. So let's go to our equations now and see how we can model this. So if x is the unknown mass of one bag, what we have on the left is 2x. Because we have two unknowns over there. But on the right we have 12. So 2x is equal to 12. Now, what did we do to get the balance system? Let us go back to our scale. We have two bags over here. And we had to remove one of those bags. On the right, we had to remove 6. Which means that since we had 12 and remove 6, what we basically did was to half both sides. In other words, because there are two bags over here, now I have one. One is half of two. And over here, similarly. Now, in maths, we can either multiply by a half or we divide by two, which is the equivalent. So in my equations, in my equation, what I actually have to do is that I would have to divide both sides by two. So this side, I would divide by two. And on the right, I would have to divide by two to maintain that balance. Now, in math, we know that two into two is one. Two into two is one. And we're left with x equal to 6. Now bear in mind that when I have x, it really means that 1x equal to 6. But because x indicates that it's one of it, we don't necessarily put the 1 in front of the x there. So I can tell that x is equal to 6. Now, if you are observing a certain pattern, we realize that we are procedurally we are solving the equation by doing the opposite operation of what we had. Initially, when we had x plus 3, to get x, we had to subtract 3 from both sides. And now that we have 2x is equal to 12, to get x, we have to divide both sides by 2. So we are doing the opposite operation from a procedural perspective. Let us stop up the questions a bit. Now, these questions probably seem more complicated, but really and truly, they follow the same procedure. In question, the first question, we have 4 minus 3p is equal to 10. Now the question is, what do I get rid of first? Bear in mind your intention is to get p. We want p to be by itself. And of course, we don't always have to solve from the left hand side. The p can also be on the right hand side. But we'll soon talk about that aspect of it. Now what do I do in a scenario like this? We have 4 minus 3p is equal to 10. What do I get rid of? Do I get rid of the 4 first or do I get rid of the minus 3 first? Now, of course, we know the order of operation. 
but we're doing the reverse now, which means that we more, we're going to get rid of a term that is being added or subtracted first. Or the term that is furthest away from the P in this case, which is 4. Now, do I add 4 or do I subtract 4? If we examine 4, we notice that 4 is positive. All right? And we could even rewrite this expression to make it easier for ourselves if we feel uncomfortable with this. Because this could be written as negative 3p plus 4 equal 10. So it looks more like what we wanted. We don't need to rewrite it, but this is what it really means. So it means that I would have to subtract 4 first. So we have negative 3p plus 4 minus 4 is equal to 10 minus 4. So negative 3p is equal to 10 minus 4, which is 6. And we divide both sides by negative 3. Now, of course, negative 3 into negative 3 is 1. Negative 3 into negative 3 is 1. So we have p equal. Now, when I divide positive 6 by negative 3, positive divided by a negative would give me a negative 2. What about the second question? We don't always have to solve from the left-hand side. We can also have m as the unknown on the right. We can still determine m if we have m by itself. So we have 8 is equal to 2m minus 1. Now, of course, we're going to have to get rid of that minus 1 first. So we can add 1 to both sides. So we can say 8 plus 1 equal 2m minus 1 plus 1. Now, 8 plus 1 is 9 equal 2m. And of course, you know, once we have 2m and we want m, we're going to have to divide both sides by 2. So 9 over 2 equal to m. So we can say, therefore, m is equal to 9 over 2. And we leave the answer as an improper fraction. And the final question here is we have 6y plus 3 equal 8y minus 4. Now, of course, if we want to find the unknown, which is y, we, there's no way we can have it on both sides. Right? We don't know it. So we have to have it on one side with something we know on the other side to determine the value of y. Now we can choose to bring the 6y over to the right or we can choose to bring the 8y over to the left. Let us bring over the 8y to the left. It is a positive 8y. So we have to subtract it from both sides. So we can say 6y minus 8y. Of course, at this moment, the 3 is unaffected. So we put it back. This would be equal to 8y minus 8y minus 4. Now, when I have 6y and I subtract 8y, I'm going to have negative 2y plus 3. And of course, on the right, that would be 0. So I'll be left with a negative 4. So we have, now we can get rid of, this looks familiar now, so we can get rid of the 3. It's a positive 3, so we subtract 3 from both sides. So we have negative 2y plus 3 minus 3 is equal to negative 4 minus 3. So negative 2y is equal to negative 7. How do I get y? Since we are multiplying by a negative 2, we can divide both sides by a negative 2. So y is equal to what happens on the right. We have negative 7 over negative 2. And when I divide by a negative by a negative, we get a positive. So this goes, so we have 7 over 2, and we we'll leave it as an improper fraction. All right, we're going to, now we're going to look at how we manually solve these equations. Bear in mind, from our scale, we realize that in order to get rid of what we never wanted, we had to do the opposite operation. So looking at question A, we know that 2x, x is the unknown. We want x by itself because our job is to find x plus 4 is equal to 10. So my task is to get the value of x. So what am I going to have to do? Now, we have 2x plus 4 is equal to 10, which means I need to get rid of that plus 4 first. So because it's plus 4, we need to get rid of it. We subtract it from both sides. If you think of the balance, in order to keep the balance, whatever we do to one side, we have to do it to the other side. So we're going to have 2x plus 4. We subtract that 4, so we have to take it from the right-hand side as well. 10 minus 4. Once we have done that, the balance will be maintained. So we now know that 2x is equal to 6. Now, how do I get x? If 2x is equal to 6, what do I do to get 6? I would have to half the system. So we divide both sides by 2, which means that x is equal 
to 3. Looking at the second example, we have 3x minus 6 is equal to 12. Now this time we have a minus 6. How do I get rid of a minus 6? I would have to do the opposite operation because I know that if I add 6 to minus 6, that becomes 0, which means that it goes away. But if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other side as well. So we can say that 3x minus 6 plus 6 is equal to 12 plus 6, which means that 3x is equal to 18. And of course, since it's 3x is equal to 18 and we want x, we do the opposite, which is to divide both sides by 3, which means that x is equal to 6. What about x over 2 plus 4 is equal to 12? It doesn't really matter. As long as you follow the procedure, or as long as you have a conceptual understanding, you are good. So we have x over 2 plus 4 is equal to 12. We want x by itself. So we're going to have to start by getting rid of the plus 4. And normally, here's a way to remember it. What's the first thing I do? We say that x over 2 plus 4 is equal to 12. The last thing that we call is what we get rid of first. So we have x over 2 plus 4, so we have to get rid of a plus 4 first. So since it's a positive 4, you know we subtract 4 from both sides. So we can say x over 2 plus 4 minus 4 is equal to 12 minus 4. So we can say that x over 2 is equal to 8. What do I do next? I want x by itself. I have x over 2, which means that I have half of x. I don't want half of x, I want 1x. So whenever we have a half and we want a whole, we have to multiply by 2. So since we are dividing both sides by 2, of course the opposite operation would be to multiply both sides by 2. So I'm going to have x over 2 times 2 is equal to 8 times 2. Now what happens? 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 2 is 1, so I end up with x equals 16.